everyone. Today we're going to learn a little about the lives of four interesting artists with unique art styles. The first artist we're going to see is George Surratt. He was born on the 2nd of December in 1859. He was born into a wealthy family and spent most of his childhood in Paris. When he was older, his family supported him financially so that he could carry on with his art. George's father was a withdrawn man who often neglected his family while his mother was a quiet, affectionate and warm person. George was a serious young man. He had a gentle voice and was always well dressed. He was an intense and secretive person who preferred reading, visiting museums and libraries or studying rather than going to parties or visiting families. He was very interested and amazed by the scientific writings of one Michel Eugene Covey. Covey discovered that two colours put closely together created a third colour on the eye from a distance. This fascinated Seurat. When Seurat was about 20, he visited the fourth Impressionist exhibition and when he saw, saw that these Impressionist painters disregarded the rules of painting, it inspired him to start experimenting himself. Instead of blending the different colours together, he made a series of small pure coloured dots on his canvas, creating a picture. This new style of painting technique was called pointillism, and George Chirac became known as the father of pointillism. One of his most famous pointillism paintings is called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. It took two years of secretive painting to complete. In the winter, he usually locked himself up to do a huge painting and then showed it off to everyone in the summer. George died on the 29th of March in 1891. He was 31 years old and it is thought that he died from either meningitis or pneumonia. The second artist we're going to look at is Vasily Kandinsky. He was born in Russia in 1866 to wealthy parents as well. He was very, very intelligent and could play the violin very well by the age of 10. He went to university in Moscow and became a law professor and married a girl named Anna. In 1896, he decided to go on a tour of Russia and during this tour, he saw a lot of folk art and paintings by Monet. He was fascinated by Monet's paintings and in his mind, he felt the paintings were unfinished. He went home decided to give up law to become an artist. His wife was not happy and so she left him. At the age of 30, Vasily went to Munich in Germany to start his art career. At art college he met a girl called Gabriella Munter and the two of them travelled around Europe's art scene for a few years. In 1908 they ended up back in Germany. Vasily decided to experiment with colour. He wondered why a tree trunk had to be brown. Why could it not be pink or purple? Vasily was a very conservative man and always wore a suit, even when he painted. And sometimes he even painted in a white suit. His studio was always organized, tidy and clean. He met a group of artists in 1909 and they formed a group called the Blue Rider. This group decided to link their paintings to spirituality and were also interested to connect with their, their paintings and artworks with music. Vasily returned to Russia at the outbreak of the First World War. He did a little painting and began teaching his own drawing technique, linking his findings to spirituality and music, to colour and painting. Portraying these aspects of human experience onto a canvas, for example, a visual picture of the music you are hearing, or a visual picture of the emotion that you're feeling. He's also seen as one of the fathers or the founders of abstract art. After the war, he went to teach at the Bauhaus in Germany, where all forms of art were taught, pottery, painting, design, etc. He taught about color and design, and once again, he taught about linking it with music and spirituality, your emotions and your feelings. The Bauhaus was shut down in 1933 by the Nazis, and Vasily, being Russian, had to leave, so he went to France. He was not accepted in France because he was Russian, so he decided to become a French citizen, and that didn't help him either. The Fr French did not like his paintings, and he didn't sell any, except a few, to the rich socialites. 
1940, his work was declared a degenerate by the Nazis, so his paintings were not allowed to be sold and he died in 1944 in complete obscurity at the age of 78. He became famous many, many, many years after his death. The third artist we're going to learn about is Pablo Picasso and he was born in Spain in the city of Malaga. He was an unusually small boy, but he had a very, very long name. His name had 23 words in it, and in Spain your surname is the same as your mom's, not like here in South Africa, where your surname is the same as your dad. Pablo Picasso's first word was lapis. This means pencil in English. His dad was an artist and an art professor, which means he also taught art. He was also a museum curator. His father started teaching him at the age of seven. Pablo painted his first painting at the age of nine. When he was 13, Pablo's father gave up painting because he said that his son could paint much better than he did. Pablo Picasso was not a good student and he got into a lot of trouble and did a lot of detention. As an adult, he was a bit of a playboy and had many girlfriends. He married twice and he had four children. He created a style of art called Cubism. He wanted to show all the possible viewpoints of a person or object at the same time. It was called Cubism because all the objects that form the painting are made from little cubes or other geometric shapes. Pablo Picasso died on the 3rd of April in 1973 at the age of 91. Our last artist is a very interesting lady who was born in Japan and knew from the age of 10 that she wanted to be a painter someday. Her name is Yayoi Kusama. However, Yayoi's mother did not want her to do any art and she took all her canvases and her art supplies away. She told Yayoi that she must marry a rich man and make a good housewife. When she was a young child, Yayoi had hallucinations. She saw things, probably from some trauma that she'd experienced. And she saw her environment and the space around her covered in patterns. She then became obsessed with painting dots and nets. Because she was very talented, and even though her family were not happy about it, she carried on doing her art. When she was a young woman, she left Japan with a suitcase full of her paintings and she went to New York. While she was in New York, she went to the top of the Empire State Building and looked down on the huge city, vowing that one day she would conquer New York and make a name for herself and her art worldwide. She worked so hard, devoted herself to her painting and she worked from morning to night doing her best to break into the art world, which at that time was dominated mostly by male artists. She painted many and huge canvases, some up to 33 feet long. As she was painting, she began to feel that the canvases were too small, and so she started to extend her art onto the environment around her. She broke the boundaries and art rules of space by not keeping her art onto her canvases. Her dot art created perspective and a feeling of infinity of going on forever and ever. Eventually she began to feel ill because she worked so hard and painted too much. She became exhausted and she returned home to Japan where she was not recognized as an artist and she had to start from the beginning. Today, at the age of 91 years, she lives in a mental institution in Tokyo, but she runs a very professional recognized art studio across the road where she works every day. She has keen assistants who help her, a space to do her painting, her library and an archive to store all her artwork. She's famous worldwide for her brilliantly colored dotted surfaces, her paintings and the environmental artworks of dots of any kind, shape or color. Now that you've listened to the interesting facts about these artists, I would like you to choose one of them and experiment by drawing and coloring in an apple in their particular style. I would also like you to answer these three questions. Why did you choose the artist? 
What do you admire most about the artist? And how do these paintings make you feel? Thank you.